Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 8, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Amazing diary this week from Didier showing you how to uh, decrypt uh, Cobalt Strike uh, traffic, but uh, this time not using the uh, leaked uh, keys uh, that uh, Didier published about uh, about a week ago, but instead extracting keys from process memory. So this assumes that you have a system that's currently infected with Cobalt Strike and you're trying to decrypt the traffic that Cobalt Strike sends back to its command control infrastructure. Well, the next thing you need to decrypt it is you need the key and that can be found in memory. Now, older versions of Cobalt Strike, uh, you could uh, pretty easily extract that key and Didier in his uh, usual fashion created a Python script uh, to do that for you. But for some of the newer versions of uh, Cobalt Strike uh, 4 and uh, later, uh, you uh, do actually need uh, some encrypted network traffic to find the key. And again, yet another little uh, Python script here by Didi. You feed it uh, two packets that you collected off the network that were encrypted with Cobalt Strike, and then it will use that data in order to extract the keys from memory. So that's, well, all it takes in order uh, to decrypt the traffic. A pretty neat technique. And uh, thanks, Didier, again, for publishing all these Python scripts that uh, make this process, while, of course, there are a lot of moving parts, uh, reasonably straightforward. Well, while the DDS post is probably more interesting for those of you who are using network forensics, uh, we do have a second post this weekend by Tom. Tom is talking quickly about a tool called Xmount. Nice thing about Xmount is that it allows you to convert various disk image formats that are commonly used in forensics and also convert them then into formats that may be easier to analyze for you. And I think it was a couple of weeks ago that I mentioned a blog post by uh, David uh, Burgess about how AT&T's uh, SIM cards are sending SMS messages whenever you insert them into a new phone, essentially notifying AT&T that you just obtained a new phone. If I remember correctly, one of the reasons that David came across this was that actually in a criminal case, it sort of mattered if a person did send an SMS message at a certain point in time. And well, it turned out that the SMS message that showed up in the carrier's logs was actually one of those automatically generated SMS messages and not one that the user initiated. So David went back now and took a couple different uh, SIM cards that he said he had laying around the AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, USA, and then Vodafone and Orange, both from Romania. And then he inserted those SIM cards in his lab environment. And here he's able to trace the traffic from the SIM card through the phone using Wireshark and essentially acquire packets. And what he found that uh, all but one of those SIM cards are sending traffic as the phone is powered up. AT&T again will uh, just send a quick message, essentially sending the phone's IMEI. Verizon similarly will connect actually via TCP. However, the connection was never established in the lab. So not really clear what exactly is happening here. T-Mobile does send an SMS message and then Orange Romania again does send a message with various phone data. So pretty much something that's sort of in line with what you would expect from some form of registration uh, procedure as the phone is being turned on. And it's probably what it is. Nothing really too sinister here, I think, other than the phone basically reporting in as it's being powered on that it got connected to the network. But of course, certainly interesting for forensics investigation where you may run into these messages and also TCP IP connections.
And finally, if you're running Mozilla's Thunderbird, there is an update available for you. If you're running uh, that uh, mail client, it fixes a number of uh, vulnerabilities rated as high. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.